pleasure to kind of share my experiences everyone every time someone asks me about it given that it's been a very adventurous journey and i'm so happy that i've had many victories when i look back and see as to how far i've come beyond everything that has happened it is really a very uh, ceremonious journey i should say especially being a bharatanatyam dancer everything has been auspicious god has been kind people have been kind i've had such wonderful people who been part of my journey so i would like to first of all uh, talk about myself as a dancer and then probably touch upon the other aspects that have been revolving around my life been keeping me motivated because that is what i do right now bharatanatyam has been something that i've always loved and i love it even more now because i'm trying to share this love with other people especially my students my audiences and the ones who love to be part of the shows that i conduct and uh, this i should attribute it entirely to my parents who initiated me into this art form for one my teacher my guru who taught me everything at a very rudimentary level several years ago when i was like i think maybe 7 8 years old when i first really seriously took up dancing and since then i've had really wonderful teachers and instructors and gurus who've been guiding me all along i would also like to thank my family who's been supportive of all my ventures because i am a person who digs and delves into everything so i have a foot here i have a foot there and i just don't want to say to no to anything so any time i get an opportunity to try out something i'm always like willing to yes why not let me try it and see but i do have this uh, urge to try and do the best of everything which is why i think <laughs> i i kind of feel somewhere okay maybe i'm doing too many things all at once i should not multitask try and focus on one thing at a time but i'm not that kind of a person i tried that also tried that also i'm not that kind of a person so i just cannot give up one thing just because i want to focus on another so i've kept everything that i have done so far passionately and i'm still doing all of them so i have not ne- neglected or ignored anything i should say that is again a blessing that i have this physical ability to dance you know this is like a physical activity which depends upon one's health and basically how we grow how we age and to me after especially childbirth having had children and having come along with beyond all the small health issues that i had i would say that it is my determination and tardily to keep dancing that has kept me going i will tell you as to how things have panned out so i started learning bharatanatyam from a teacher perhaps when i was younger than 8 but didn't take it up seriously but then when i was 8 and i joined this uh, bharatanatyam guru by name uh, shrimati krishna kumari she is a very uh, renowned teacher now so i was very excited about being part of her class and visiting her class in those days we didn't have like our parents dropping us picking us up so it was always like you take the bus you go after school come back from the bus stop get into a different set of clothes go to the bus stop take the bus and it was like maybe 2 3 kilometers away but still it's not like i was an exceptional dancer on day one thing like that i had a lot of people to motivate me around in class when i saw my seniors was fascinated by one senior who used to dance beautifully and she was the teacher who motivated many of us dancers in class and after writing a certain point i started performing on stage as part of my teachers group ballets dance productions so that's when i really got the hang of what it is to be a performer till such time it was just going to the class and dancing in between the four walls and uh, of the classroom and then just trying to please the teacher because she would say sit down keep your hands tight smile more so many small things that are part of a bharatanatyam dancers learning but when it came to me dancing on stage i think that's where it met up more precise like a butterfly like you know coming out so i was like aware of oh so many people are watching me i need to 
be aware of that and I cannot be fidgeting or standing side stage doing things which are funny. So I need to be aware of the fact that I'm a performer now. So I have to stay calm and walk with a little bit of grace, exit. Graduated, I was really keen on uh, pursuing a little bit of some academic course at the next at the next level, given that I was not happy with the bachelor's degree. So that then came a point when parents are like looking for a groom, trying to talk to us about getting married, talking, you know, that's that's the norm. Okay, that's that was so accepted then that 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 is still the norm in many households. But the talk was like, you know, about what next? Where do you want to kind of go from here? Then yes, you have alliances coming up. Is that what you want to do? How do you want to kind of you know speak to this person? We have that, and uh, it was an arranged marriage. Mine was an arranged marriage, so it was very clear that I I really wanted to go with what my parents told me and had for me. So I was very open to what they said, and I said yes, that is fine. But if it is somebody who lives in the U.S. and if I have to go settle there, I don't want to be a dependent. I don't want to sit at home and cook and just stay there like a housewife and you know taking care of household chores. I would rather go to work, do something constructively. So I don't want to be a dependent. So at that time, I got told that a U.S. citizen becomes a citizen after many many years. First, it is the dependent visa. You go there, and once you are eligible from NH1, NH4, there are several categories. You kind of slowly move on little by little little by little apply for the next stage then you become a citizen so i was thinking okay i cannot wait for that long staying at home doing nothing i really want another degree so that i can go to work because in the us they consider 14 years of education as a prerequisite to go to work so india has only 3 years which give, they give you after 12 right actually 15 years is what india gives an average bachelor's uh, not a b student but a bachelor of science the bachelor of arts 12 years in school and 3 years in college but in the us they wanted 16 years 16 years of total education including a college degree so i got to know of that so i started studying towards my masters degree in public administration because i had scored very well in economics that was again a subject of major interest to me so i wanted to do something in indian economy public administration of the indian economy so i took it up seriously and i got my degree in 2 years and this was uh, shortly after i think i finished my uh, graduation in fine arts so i had done my degree in painting and arts then i got my degree in public administration and in the meantime my uh, engagement had happened and i was getting ready for the final date of wedding so that i would fly out of india because my fiance was there in the us and at that point in time i felt really i felt this need to go back to art so i joined as an art teacher in a cbse school when i look back and see myself as an art teacher <laughs> So to this day, I'm like wondering why did I switch from art to Bharatanatyam? <laughs> where where did the switch happen? Then after I went to the US, I started teaching kids there in my community because there Indians want to cling on to their roots. So exactly. even if you kind of have a neighborhood which has four Indians, that's more than enough for us to come together, meet each other. talk to each other and spend time together go together mm-hmm. so we really cling on to our roots and we crave for people who are like minded exactly. so during holi during diwali so they would have these uh, small events in the place where i lived in new york they would uh, kind of send their kids to me ask me to train them for the diwali program i also danced all the same i got chances to perform on stage and i started teaching kids in my area in the community where i stayed slowly and i had like a good bunch of really happy going uh, kids who were happy really uh, kind of in the, in the true sense because there i was not teaching proper bharatanatyam it was just for the fun of it i used to teach them some steps and then they had these famous bollywood songs 
so they would love to kind of you know get the kids to dance to that so they would come and ask me saying please ma'am i think there was this movie for this <laughs> when uh, sharuk khan and uh, there was one song about india no so this song yeah. about india had to be yeah, part yeah. of every <laughs> so <laughs> they were saying oh we want to i love india that song has to be taught to them ma'am please you can teach them bharatanatyam they can do all that but they have to dance to that one uh, movie song also <laughs> so it was not like a proper bharatanatyam class because i was also very young and i should say at this point it is very important that children go to the right teacher mm. to learn bharatanatyam so it's i i was a novice at that time so i did not know much about teaching though i had learned items and i was kind of you know completely fulfilled in terms of what i wanted to be as a dancer i did not have the knowledge of what a teacher needs to be mm. to be able to impart classical bharatanatyam but still it was more like a casual exchange of you know uh, i would say Uh, please send them home. I'll babysit them. I'll also teach them something. So I, I used to love the fact that many of the parents who went to work, they would bring their kids home and ask me to babysit their kids till they got back from work. So it was it was not like a very serious thing when I started teaching Bharatanatyam. But then once I got exposed to a few teachers in India, every time I visited India, I attended workshops. I attended sessions with teachers. I started reading, and I also started dancing myself because I was really craving to get back to dancing after I had delivered both my boys. So I had two cesareans. So the first one was also a C-section, and I was told strictly not to do any physical activity and take up dancing at all. This was when I was in India only. I delivered my first child in India. it was a uh, 10 day uh, treatment in the hospital post the surgery cesarean and then again uh, i guess i went back to new york same place where we lived mm-hmm. after my son was a year old and then i had my second one mm-hmm. after a year so it was just in two years i had two cesarean sections two c sections and i was like told that uh, you are not supposed to do anything lift weights lift heavy things you have to really take care now because you've had two cesareans it's not a normal delivery a lot of myths that are surrounding this concept of a cesarean uh, delivery which is something that i defied and i thought okay fine at my own pace let me start dancing so that's when i started the class after my second one was born I used to put him on his high chair with his food and his <laughs> snacks in front of you know the table that he was sitting in, and I would my class, and it was really sweet of all the parents who enjoyed bringing their kids to me at the time that I wanted them to bring their uh, children for the class, and plus they would also take care of my son, maybe at times, and it was a really uh, nice thing that happened to me when I was in the US because in India had I started a dance class, I couldn't have taken those risks. <laughs> I just couldn't have taken those risks. <laughs> so once I realized that uh, I had to really start, I have to really start looking at my class as something serious. I want to take it forward. Like a you know, proper dance class, I used to come to India every time and take lessons with my other teachers who I'm still in touch with. So it was really a nice thing to look at it from a different perspective as a dance teacher. So when I was a student, it was it was different, and then I had now matured, become like you know mother. Plus I was looking at other children in a different way. Who are all like my children? So I had that patience in me to understand. How it is going to happen? This is how much time it will take for the child to learn this step, and not always is the child ready or flexible. So it will take time. So once I started uh, teaching, I think this was uh, after my uh, after 2000, the million millennium year. After 2000, my dance class picked up very well in the US. So I had a uh, lot of events that came my way, different. really prestigious events where i was invited to 
dance in the one most uh, nice event that i can remember just before i moved back to india was this dance uh, program at the metropolitan museum of art so they asked me to dance uh, you american consulate they okay. kind of had this collaboration with the indian consulate and then they kind of asked me to dance as part of their opening ceremony when they inaugurated the samir kusrao painting okay gallery It was a really nice event, and of course, through my cultural uh, contacts in uh, the place where I lived in New York, a place called Poughkeepsie, a lot of events in New York area and the vicinity. So that was a uh, that is a time that I really cherish in my life because I had like you know lot of time to do everything that I wanted to do. Plus, I was able to raise a family in the site. Keep give it all the best in terms of even my artwork. I kept doing my paintings. You know, my friends there in the US have all of them have one painting of mine. That's that's my favorite gift to them. So I've given it to them all. So I used to kind of be able to do everything. That's that's how it all panned out. Then there came a point when uh, both me and my husband we started discussing about moving back to India. This is mainly because my in-laws. were all alone here and plus i have this uh, uh, incident i have this incident in mind which is like a major game changer in my life where my younger brother passed away oh. it is a tragedy that most of us thought we would be able to overcome because we come this far but my mother could not so we all had things to move on with my children were there for me and my brothers and he had others Uh, kind of there for him to look at, and we all kind of had things to think about. Otherwise, but for my mother, it was a big deal. So I really wanted to come back to be with her, move back. So and my father was also not able to manage all on his own. So decided to we decided to move back, and after 15 years of staying in the US, for me it was 15 years. Around 15 years, and for my husband, it was almost 20 years because he went there after doing his IIT graduation, and he studied at Berkeley, did his PhD there. So for him, it was 20 years of US life. But uh, we decided to move back still, and we decided to not take up our green card or our citizenship. So we just came back, and we didn't want to have any ties. You know, the fact that we will have to pay taxes. <laughs> to a bush or to a, a whoever was the president at that time did not really work well with my husband so he was saying no 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 i don't want to do that let's just move overnight and we did not even think of buying a house because of this even though we lived there for so many years we decided that we kind of will live in a very small place an apartment which we can just move out of so i decided to move back and very little furniture Mm-hmm. Is materialistically you get attached to things, right? Very <laughs> tough. So, most of the people who live in the U.S. Mm-hmm. miss their luxurious homes, the garden, the backyard, lot of things that they really tend to and get so used to. It's very hard for people to move away like that. Even moving within the same town from one home to Thank another you. is such a task. So we kind of. decided that decided that we will not accumulate stuff make it easier for ourselves to move to india when the time comes and my kids were in fifth and sixth grade or fourth and fifth grade they both are two years apart and so we moved here and uh, they had a hard time adjusting they like any other set of kids who move from the us this is something that all of us have experienced i've been told by others who moved back before me i have still i i still see children who come from there who just cannot gel with local kids and then they go to international schools because of that so that's always been the case and it will it will back to the us that i will do my mba a lot of our friends who moved from there to here told us that you will not like the life in india so i never hesitated to pursue anything related to academics or anything new so i got to kind of do a little bit of research with some friends of mine 
then I joined this MBA program, which was one of the best programs in the tri-state area. In a college by name Marist. It was a business school, so I joined that program. The only question was, I had these two little guys at home. Mm-hmm. How do I go to college? How do I do this? My husband has to go to work in the morning. Then they had this excellent executive MBA program for people who were already working and they could attend college between six and nine at night. Six PM and nine PM at night. My God! <laughs> so I enrolled for that program, and it was so challenging for me because these kids would come back from their school bus. I would feed them, get them all ready, take them to my car. Actually, it was severe winter in New York. Oh. Almost six months a year, it was very cold. So I would take them to my car, put them in their car seats. bundle them up and make them sit in the car and wait for my husband to come back in his car come back to india mm-hmm. so we moved to india and i took up a job with hp to mm-hmm. to interview with them it was a really nice place to work in after having taken a huge gap exactly a corporate world where i really did not know what to expect mm-hmm. so hp was a wonderful place and it was something that gave me Some kind of a getaway from this thing that I was going through as a person who was transitioning from the US to here. I was missing my friends. <laughs> I was missing a lot of things because of having moved back from there. But I think it was really good. On the contrary, what my friends suggested, right? Mm-hmm. To go to work, mm-hmm. keep your mind occupied. That's the best way. When I had to take a break from work. I realized that it's not going to work with me going for, to a full time job working there is really so stressful on me because I would have to take calls from home people who wanted to log in from Mountain View California because it was a multinational company a lot of people logged in from the US they would log in early in the morning want to have conference calls it would be night here and I was the only one sitting at home so I felt a really I felt a little Mm. lost when i was working from home mm. with all this happening around me kids doing their homework and doing things i felt it's not the right thing so i quit my job or resigned my job and uh, was very happy that i was kind of recognized for my services at hp and i got this uh, token of appreciation outstanding great great that one year so mm. somewhere i feel you know the little things that you earn keep your memories great you know memories alive about every experience that you've had in any place that you kind of they can explore and things so once i decided to discontinue working at hp i really wanted to pursue my dance start dancing because once you start learning bharatanatyam right you stay fit you have this practice abhyasa that you do every day discipline of dancing it keeps you very fit mm. then there is this time after a particular age you start gaining weight mm. and for a dancer right it feels like okay i have gained too much weight why is that i'm not fit enough i'm not fit enough it's not like i was not fit i was very fit mm. i was doing a lot of things at work going for my evening it's just the fact that i had put on weight physically mm. you know, gain weight around our pelvic area become a little chubby i was like thinking okay i have to get back to dancing and i was very lucky at that point that i found this lovely guru in bangalore by name guru bhanumathi who is a guru for several dancers in bangalore so i started learning with her and i also started a class here in you know, bangalore dance class where i started teaching bharatanatyam to my community friends their kids so when i started the class it was all the more interesting to mm-hmm. deal with children here in india because my teacher would talk to me about how dance bharatanatyam has changed over the years mm-hmm. as an art form even though it's a traditional art form the methods of teaching haven't remained the same and the children who are learning have not remained the same like those people who used to go to their gurus houses guru parampara no they would have to stay in their gurus home learn the art form so it's not like that and it is an art form that has to be learned for years to get up so it's not like you can do your arangetram in 2 years so it's like a schooling you know enrolling your child in lkg graduating <laughs> graduating every class then up to 8 and 9 that's when the teacher says maybe she can do her arangetram 
in the next few years mm. so it is like a very very involved art form mm. classical that's why it's called classic it's not like a bollywood dance class where you skip a class think mm. okay fine i can catch up she taught only that song i can so we have to learn things from basics from a very very rudimentary level from stepping the like how to do the adavas the tatadavas the hastas very intricate i won't go into those details mm. but learning bharatanatyam Mm. is a very involved process teaching bharatanatyam mm. is a very very involved process <laughs> one has to know how to especially in this current generation of kids who exist where they are multitasking they have academic pressure i had done this but i did not have the opportunity to learn that or you know when you're talking about this to me i was thinking about what it is that i have not done and i'm unhappy about i wanted to do embroidery <laughs> sewing <laughs> i did not do that i did only painting dancing singing music and other things which i had the time to go attend classes and learn but then age is just a number age is just a number you can still do wonders kind of do things that you are passionate about if you are not passionate about it become passionate about it by doing it regularly try it out see if it is something that you like and if it helps you no strep get rid of that stress or get rid of that uneasiness that you had in the morning if i'm able to do a little bit of crochet at night before i go to sleep i get very good sleep is what one auntie told me said i just keep knitting and it's so soothing i just listen to something playing on the uh, cell phone some music that i like and i feel it's so soothing and i go to sleep so things like that right you have to actually have that discipline discipline is a word which i will use here in a very different way as a dancer for me discipline comes from practicing doing my steps every day do the same practice it's not that kind of discipline. it's a routine that i set for myself so let's say i have to wake up at this time in the morning and these are the things that i do there are some days when i really do not want to do some things i cannot get around to thinking of it because my mind is not there i thought about something that has happened in the past i just don't want to practice i just don't want to conduct class the day starts like that but i think we can beat that by doing something that we like it with keeping our minds occupied so at such a time i think you should just put an end to what you're doing just stop doing what you're doing let's say even if it's cooking that you don't want to do you can Press that to people around you and say, "I am not doing it. I'm not up to it." Go and do that quietly. So I am actually a person who writes every day in Facebook about Lord Krishna. I have this uh, book which is coming out, which has one Krishna painting which I have described every day since 2015. Oh wow! And the artist is Kesha Venkatraman. So we have done this. Uh, he has done the paintings. the last few years he paints it first thing in the morning and puts it on facebook so i describe that by looking at the picture because i have done fine arts and painting some of his paintings are based on picasso italian krishna spanish krishna egyptian krishna so versatile they look they make you think twice about how can he paint a krishna how can a krishna and a arjuna bhagavad gita painting be like this how can one come up with these thoughts so but when you look at those pictures they are real bhagavad gita shlokas which are painted with a very different setting not the usual krishna painting so when i saw that right i thought that gives me so much peace so you should try and take up something that gives you peace that gives you that get away from what you are thinking about and i started doing that similarly for all the mothers out there who are busy with their regular routines it is never too late <laughs> to pick up something take take a brush paint or start blogging write poetry read a book and write your reviews critiquing book critiquing or uh, you know probably even watching a movie sometimes it's a lovely stress buster so what if it is at 8:30 in the morning now you have amazon prime and you have netflix yeah. it's okay just <laughs> watch some movie and just you know remove all the thoughts off all the toxic things that are there in one's mind yeah. and try to interact with people who are like minded that's very important you uh, have to have <laughs> that camaraderie yeah thank you ma'am thanks thank you. that i want to just end my talk with see like i said is doing lot of things all of you 
out there go for it do as many things that you like to do as possible don't aim to be perfect be perfectly adequate yes you don't have to be perfect at anything you do things to be perfectly adequate for yourself for your own happiness and satisfaction you yeah. will live a wonderful life flourish very well in anything that you take up that's that's something yeah. that i learned from experience